Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers in Surgery. I'm Roberto Mares Pais, a general surgery resident from Regional General Hospital 180 in Mexico, and I'll be briefly reviewing the article titled Management of Post-Traumatic Retained Motorax, a Prospective Observational Multicenter AAST Study. There is no precise information on the incidence of post-traumatic retained motorax, but this is a common sequela of chest trauma. There is information associating it as an independent risk factor for developing empyema and other unfavorable clinical scenarios. That is why it becomes important to promptly recognize and treat post-traumatic retained motorax. This study focused on identifying the factors that allowed the successful use of different therapeutic interventions for post-traumatic retained motorax, as well as identifying independent predictors for the use of thoracotomy. This is a prospective observational multicenter study. The inclusion criteria were the placement of a thoracostomy tooth within the first 24 hours of hospital admission for the treatment of a pneumothorax or hemothorax and the demonstration of retained hemothorax with subsequent CT scan. For this study, retained hemothorax was defined as any heterogeneous fluid collection that had 35 to 70 Hansfield unit readings on CT scan and evidence of pleural thickening. The size of the retained hemothorax was estimated using a validated method for estimating the volume of pleural effusions developed by Mergio et al. Once the volume of the retained hemothorax was calculated, it was classified into one of three groups according to its volume. Small retained hemothorax had less than 300 cubical centimeters Moderate retained hemothorax had between 301 and 900 cubical centimeters, and large retained hemothorax had more than 900 cubical centimeters. Patient treatment was decided by the surgeon in charge of the patient, consisting of observation, placement of an additional thoracostomy tooth or image guided percutaneous drainage, intrapleural thrombolysis video-assisted thoracoscopy, and thoracotomy. From May 2009 through 2011, the story enrolled 328 patients with post-traumatic retained hemothorax from 20 centers in the United States, Canada, and South America. The mean age was 38.6 years, 86.6% were male, and 51.1% sustained penetrating injury. The mean injury severity score was 20.7. The most used initial procedure was video-assisted thoracoscopy with 33.5%. 30.8% of patients were initially managed with observation and in 82.2% of them, there was no need for any additional therapeutic intervention. 58.1% of the 328 patients, that is a total of 186 patients, sustain severe trauma or injury severity score greater than 15. And 33.8% or 108 patients suffer critical injuries or injury severity score greater than or equal to 25. Hemothorax was the most common indication for the initial placement of thoracostomy tooth. Diagnosis of retained hemothorax was documented within 72 hours after initial chest tooth placement among 32% of patients, increasing to 55.5% by 5 days of hospitalization and 87.2% by 10 days of hospitalization.
60% of the patients had a volume of retained motorats measured on the CT scan less than or equal to 300 cubic centimeters. Retained motorats was associated with a diaphragm injury in 14.1% of patients and rib fractures in 54.1% of patients. Patients who were successfully observed without the need for any therapeutic intervention were more likely to be older, have a volume of retained hemothorax less than or equal to 300 cubic centimeters, were also less likely to have sustained penetrating injury or sustained rib fractures, have a higher injury severity score, and have a higher abbreviated injury scale of the abdomen. Also, they have been initially treated with a smaller toracostomy tube and have an hemothorax as the indication for the initial toracostomy tube placement. The strongest independent predictor of successful observation was estimated volume of retained hemothorax of less than or equal to 300 cubic centimeters. Independent predictors of successful video-assisted toracoscopy as definite treatment were absence of an associated diaphragm injury, use of periprocedural antibiotics for initial toracostomy placement, and a volume of retained hemothorax of less than or equal to 900 cubic centimeters. The independent predictors of the need for toracotomy were the presence of diaphragm injury volume of retained hemothorax greater than 900 cubic centimeters and failure to give periprocedural antibiotics on the initial toracostomy tooth placement. Infectious complications were also noted to be common in the setting of post-traumatic retained hemothorax. NPM was identified among 26.8% of study patients and pneumonia was documented in 19.5% of patients. Patients who developed empyema or pneumonia after post-traumatic retained hemothorax had a longer intensive care unit and hospital length of stay. Toracotomy remains the gold standard therapy. Its most important drawback is its significant morbidity. That is why less invasive modalities are being used as first-line modalities. Video-assisted toracoscopy has success rates as definite therapy approaching those of toracotomy, that is 70% versus 79.2% respectively. Its benefit is being a less invasive therapeutic procedure that can be the approach of choice among patients with CT scan estimated retained hemothorax volumes of 300 cubic centimeters or greater, an option in appropriately selected patients with volumes of CT scan of less than or equal to 300 cubic centimeters can be observation. In patients with volumes exceeding 900 cubic centimeters or associated diaphragm injury, thoracotomy remains as an appropriate intervention. I'm Roberto Mares Pais, a general surgery resident at Regional General Hospital 180. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on LinkedIn. Don't forget to check out this week in score module on tracheobronchial and lung injury. Thanks for listening.